But now, I'd like to invite to the stage Kantar and Danone to come over and talk to us about how Danone is supercharging their innovation pipeline through the magic of research and analytics. So please join me by inviting to the stage Sophia and Besta Dermir. Hello everyone, uh, it's great to be here today. I'm Sophia from Kantar, and this is Bestie from Danone. Hello. And we're going to discuss the ways that Kantar helped Danone with their innovation pipeline using search analytics. Bestie, thank you for being here. Pleasure. First of all, can you please tell us a little bit about what was your goal with this project mm. and the business question that you wanted Kantar yeah. to answer? Uh, the all, I mean, we're all often in search of foresights, right? But often, albeit great, foresight work sometimes remains to be um, too conceptual, not, ne not necessarily very actionable in mm -hmm. the short term. So our main, main objective was actually to make foresights more actionable rather than mm -hmm. conceptual uh, for the business uh, by using search data either to create or validate the upcoming innovation that we have in our key categories, yogurts, mm -hmm. waters, uh, plant-based beverages, so all of our consumer categories. Uh, basically, we really wanted to uncover locally relevant emerging uh, flavor and ingredient trends that we can act upon um, quickly. Mm -hmm. And why did you decide to go with this specific approach? What was the benefit of search analytics for your needs? Good question, a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, first one, uh, this was not necessarily to replace all traditional research. There is still a huge role for it in terms of validation, validating the potential in market success. Uh, of our innovation, uh, but there might be instances where we're innovating in a niche area, there might be instances where the size of the price of the innovation doesn't justify a full-fledged um, learning plan, or there might be cases where there's not enough time. So this still enables us um, to be grounded in consumer reality uh, in an unbiased and locally relevant manner, so that's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two is actually the quality of insights, because uh, certain trends that do stick sometimes are the ones that are boiling underneath the surface for a long time and uh, as we would all probably know uh, these are not necessarily top of mind to consumers when you start talking to them so it's really to be on top of what's boil, boiling underneath the surface and uh, understanding and informing future thinking uh, with the help of that. Thank you and how has your experience with the search analytics tool been so far? Uh, very positive since I'm sitting here. <laughs> um, no, but I think uh, so far I can uh, talk about various benefits. The first one is I think it creates a new discipline uh, of using observational uh, data in a self-serve manner um, in the business, uh, which is uh, quite time-saving as well because of the ease of use of the uh, platform uh, and likewise uh, it is helping multiple functions in the business so it's not isolating to marketing for instance marketing use it r &I use it uh, data teams use it so variety of uh, stakeholders and teams in the business using it that that's mainly because the tool is very intuitive and extremely user friendly and again as I said promoting a uh, self-serve culture and finally and to me that's the most important benefit uh, it we can scale it up or down as we need. Meaning, if you have a quick question where you need a very quick answer uh, to see one particular um, innovation idea is relevant or not, just to have a very quick sense check, you can do that in a matter of seconds. Similarly, uh, if you want to deep dive in some longitudinal trends and have a sort of uh, inspiration session on your portfolio thinking and so on, it has the depth, granularity and magnitude that uh, you need to do for you, need for you to do that sort of exploration uh, mm -hmm. as well. So that scaling up and down, I think, mm -hmm. is the main uh, practical benefit uh, for me. Right. Thank you. And this brings me nicely to my next point about how we went about this approach and what search analytics is in general. Search data is literally the way that people search online. So the specific questions, the topics, and the words that they put into their browser. And the benefits of this type of data is that it's very honest, it's unbiased, and the sheer magnitude of it as well. We use artificial intelligence and advanced analytics to identify, classify, and visualize 
relevant consumer searches that can then be categorized into trends. So we have emerging trends, we have mainstream trends, established and niche. And this categorization is based on the amount of average monthly searches that users type in and also the growth of interest of those topics over time. A trend is considered to be emerging when the average monthly searches are relatively low compared to more mainstream and popular topics. But with those topics, we do see a steady increase of interest over the past six to 24 months. We're able to do this across multiple categories, almost all markets and languages. And for this specific project, we carefully workshop 200 different topics, ranging from different diet types, to exotic fruits, to vitamins and minerals. We then collected five years worth of data, so it was truly billions of relevant searches. And once we have the volumes and the growth that we need, we then visualize it into an easy to use dashboard. And from there, we can add new categories uh, and new topics within a number of days. And after that, we um, take the data, we put it into the dashboard, and we are able to do our recommendations and actionable insights based on the trends that we see. That said, Bestie, um, was there anything about this approach that surprised you that you weren't mm. expecting to get? Uh, yes, uh, so we obviously embarked on this journey with an aim to understand what might be up and coming. So that objective was achieved and is still being used in that manner in the business. But also because of uh, that uh, mainstream established versus niche categorization that we have uh, within the uh, platform, uh, I think it also helps us uh, revalidate, reassess runway of our existing portfolio as well. So not just look at the future, but uh, to look after the health of the present as well. Likewise, uh, not all trends go upwards, obviously. So it also showed us the flip side of the coin, which is uh, what topics are losing traction. So that again, we inform future thinking with a uh, more uh, cautious uh, way of approaching it. Last but not least, again, you mentioned it whilst explaining how it works, uh, looking at uh, the longevity of trends and looking at their momentum in short, medium and long term, uh, it also enabled us to look at things like to take seasonal action, for instance, to look at things that, are, that peak seasonally or things that might have a very tactical short term relevance but not have long term longevity. So it gives us that time of uh, that sense of uh, mm -hmm. time planning mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And what do you expect search analytics to have an impact on Danone in general? Mm. Uh, a few things and probably touching upon a few of the points I uh, made earlier. One is I think it uh, creates a very nice self-serve culture when it comes to trends and being close to consumers uh, agenda. And because of the nature of the tool, uh, we've seen a lot of interest and enthusiasm ac across um, multiple departments. Uh, from the business because this is the type of tool that excites people because it's very accessible, it's very easy to use and more importantly of course uh, it offers an approach to foresight in a very focused and actionable manner rather than uh, just framing it as inspiration. So that's I think the first uh, way of using foresight more embedded into day-to-day uh, -day thinking. The second thing which uh, helps day-to-day -day conversation is we can easily start ideating around hundreds if not thousands of ideas but because of the depth and granularity of the data that's easily accessible through the tool, we can filter down very quickly to uh, what's really meaningful, useful, and uh, has potential uh, for us. So I think those are the main impacts on day-to-day -day thinking around innovation. Thank you very much. And if I can just quickly summarize, the power of analytics in innovation really lies in its unprompted consumer view the magnitude of data, the speed at which we can get this data, and also the ability to scale. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.